Good morning to everybody out there. This is Pastor Kathy at LifePoint Church, and I just want to welcome everybody to this short message today that we're going to be doing. And I have my big cup of tea, which everyone knows I need, and I'm hoping that you can read what that word is, and I'm sure you can, and it's hope. And that's really what we should be looking at today is a little bit of hope in our lives. Let me put my cup down before I spill. But we're not. We're going to talk about obedience. Oh, what a great word. And then guess what, children? Obedience is hard for adults. It's hard for teenagers. It's hard for grandma and grandpa. We don't always listen to what we're supposed to do, and especially when God talks to us. So we're going to talk a little bit today about Jonah. And we all know the story. Jonah's located in the Old Testament, and he has a book for his whole story in regards to how he works in the whole story of the Bible. Because remember, the Bible is one big book. It's a story that goes on forever and ever. And it tells us what's going to be happening. And we're going to talk about Jonah. And Jonah was a prophet. And he was someone that would tell whatever God told him to do or say. He would go and tell people one way or the other. He and God had a special relationship. And that is really cool. And so they, excuse me, they uh, talked to each other. And Jonah would listen and he would obey. But there was one time where Jonah didn't. And all kinds of craziness happened. And I'm sure that you know the story, but we're going to go through it a little bit and see if we can get it all done today. And if not, we'll continue it next week. I do have some great news at the end and a challenge for you, too. So I hope you'll listen all the way to the end of my message today. So as I said, Jonah is a prophet and God wanted him to go out and spread the word and talk about God's forgiveness and his grace. See, even back in the olden times, which we know was 2,000 years ago, they still had problems with disobedience. And I can guarantee you, 2,000 years in the future, for your great, 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 great grandchildren that you might have later on in life, after you've grown up and done all those adult things, they are going to have trouble with obedience too. It's just something that we have because God gave us free will. But sometimes that free will gets in the middle of things and causes craziness. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So Jonah was listening and God told him to go to Nibia. And Nibia was not a nice town. There were a lot of bad people and they did things totally against God's commandments. They stole and they used his name and they had idols that they worship and they did so many things that if you went through all the Ten Commandments, they would do that over and over again. And so God said, you need to go and preach because I am going to send you to Nivea. And when you go to Nivea, I want you to preach and I want you to tell them that they only have 40 days to basically get their act together. Now, does that 40 days sound familiar? It should. We talked about it 40 days a couple of weeks ago with Noah's Ark. They didn't give them a warning of 40 days or else, but Noah's Ark and the water and the family and all those animals were together for 40 days. Remember, as I've said many, many, many times, I love how numbers keep repeating. The numbers three and the number seven and now we have 12, and now we have 40, and I bet we can even find more than that. Talk about the feeding of the 4,000, and then the feeding of the 5,000. So there's always numbers in there just to show us that there's a reason, and especially when you're in Old Testament and you go to the New Testament. It is a reflection that God has a plan and it started from there. Not that he just sort of willingly willing picked out these numbers or did it. There's a reason for it. And you know, I like to work with those numbers and point them out to you. So God tells Jonah to go to Nivea. Nivea is, a, like I said, a bad town. And Jonah knows about this. And so Jonah decides, I'm not going to do that. He basically was saying, I am not going to waste my time on a town that is so bad. Why do that? 
I just doesn't make sense to me. And so I think there's other places that want to hear about God's word and want to learn about God and want to begin a relationship with God. And so God told him to go to Nivea, which was this one direction. And Jonah went totally the other direction to get away. Now, can we get away from God? We've talked about it. Is there any place in the world anywhere that we can go underneath our bed in our closet hiding in the basement if you even know what a basement is no there's nowhere we can go to get away and Jonah he should have known that because he had a relationship with God and God spoke to him and told him where to go and he obeyed but for some reason he thought he could do it his way and not God's way and we know how that works out right not always so good And so Jonah decides to go and buy a ticket and get on a boat and they go out to sea and then they're out there and he decides he's going to take a nap. I guess he had a hard day that day. I don't know. So he goes all the way to the bottom of the boat and lays down on top of some of those seed bags and just makes himself comfy and falls asleep. Meanwhile, later on, there's a big storm and the waves are crashing all over the place and there's lightning coming down and scaring them. And all these people were just like, didn't know what was going on and they all thought they were going to die. And so they are out there and they started throwing things off to try to ease the weight on there. So they're throwing all the the goods that they had on the boat that they're taking to people thinking that that was maybe they need to pay to the gods. They all had different gods. And they were all praying and offering sacrifices and making promises, but they didn't have our God. And so they couldn't figure it out. And the boat is being tossed around and the waves are taller than the boat. And it's just getting all crazy and they just don't know what they're going to do. And so finally the captain goes running downstairs for some reason and he wakes up Jonah and he says, Jonah, you, what are you doing? And I'm sure Jonah just probably like stretched and said, oh, just taking a nap. I mean, what else can you do on a boat? It's not a cruise ship where there's a lot of activities that you can do. It's a boat. And he says, and the captain says, you need to pray to your God because we got this all going on and this is chaos and we're all going to die. I like that part because they have tried, the crew has tried their gods. They have tried everything we can think of in regards to a boat to, to make it so that the boat's not tossed around all over the place. But then the captain comes down and it's nowhere it is say in Jonah that the captain and Jonah had a discussion and Jonah told him, yes, I'm a prophet and I hear the Lord God. And do you know about God and Jesus and, and what's going to be coming Later on in the New Testament, I don't think they had that kind of discussion over the dinner table. So it's really cool to me that this guy, the captain, assumed that Jonah had to have some God. And so he wanted him to go and contact his God and see if he could get the storm to stop or to protect him in some way. Because they really thought they were all going to die. And Jonah got scared. Because now he thought, maybe I caused this. Maybe my disobedience to God has caused this. And if that was true, what would happen? The boat would go down and all those people, maybe they would save their lives by hanging on to pieces of wood out in the water until some other boat came along or something. Or maybe they would all die. Now our disobedience, our disobedience, sorry, to God, It doesn't bring things as extreme as that. But we have to remember that when we disobey God, it is hurting us. It's not hurting other people around it, though they may not like our choices that we make. But it's hurting our relationship with God. And it's important that we keep that relationship with him. And so he goes down and he says, why have you done this, Jonas? crying out and he doesn't understand and the captain is like you must have done and Jonah explains who he is and that he's a believer in God and so then the captain says why have you done this what has caused this and they cried out to the Lord 
Let me read those verses to you because it was really important to me. And maybe you'll understand why. Therefore, oh, it's in Jonah 1, 14, just in case you want to look it up later. 14, 15, and 16. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and say, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, this man being Jonah. Don't make us die because of the mistake that Jonah made. And do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. God always has a plan. So they picked up Jonah and they threw him in the sea. And the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. You know what I like about those verses? Earlier verses, it says that they all prayed to their gods and they sacrificed to their gods. And it didn't work. And then all of a sudden, they're praying to our God. Because our God is for everybody. It's just not for certain people. It's for everybody. He loves everybody. He forgives everybody. He wants the best for us. And so it's the realization that these sailors who have maybe never, ever heard the word of God, or maybe somebody mentioned it to them a long time ago, and they just sort of thought about it for a while and then shrugged their shoulders and said, oh, well, but they see the power of our God. This ocean is crazy. The waves are higher than the ships. They believe they're going to die. And in that verse, it says, we pray, O Lord, do not let us perish. They are coming to, and they did. And then verse 16, they feared the Lord exceedingly. They knew of our God's power and what he could do. And they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Now to me, and this is my opinion, I hear when they take vows, that's like giving your heart to the Lord. They said, okay, Lord, we understand what's going on. We understand how powerful you are. And they also had to understand how full of grace and forgiveness because I'm sure they didn't want to show, throw Jonah into the water, but they did because they felt that's what needed to be done. Plus Jonah told them, just throw me in there. And as soon as they did it, I'm sure that Jonah just probably did a back flop into that water. And as soon as they did it, the water was calm. Okay. Do you remember the story in the New Testament? Jesus was sleeping on a boat and they were with a bunch of fishermen and they were out there and the water started getting crazy and the thunder was going and everything and they thought they were going to die. And here's Jesus just leaning back, sleeping away. And then they wake up Jesus because they can't believe that he's not awake. And he wakes up and says just a few words and everything calms down. And the realization to those on the boat, even the wind and the water listens to Jesus. I think it was the same realization from these guys in Jonah, that the wind and the water listen to this God. And so we must listen to this God and we must pay attention to this God. And so they are praying to him. And then as it says, they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. It doesn't say they took, offered a sacrifice to a Lord because they all had different Lords. But when you put that emphasis of the Lord, that's our Lord that they're talking about. And they realize how important he is and how powerful he is. But also our Lord is so gentle at the same way when he offers us peace. And he's there beside us and he gives us strength. And so they're understanding and reaching this. Now, unfortunately, Jonah's out in the water and he's flopping around and stuff. And I thought, I'm sure that Jonah thought, this is the end and I'm going to die. But remember, God always, always has a plan. And what was his plan? Well, that big old whale, that's what it was. Now, I wouldn't call that a rescue. I'd better be rescued by like a helicopter or the Coast Guard or something like that. But this is what God had to do work with. He didn't have Coast Guard 
or you know helicopters and everything that come in and pick you up and take you away and everything else but he had a whale and we've talked about sitting in that whale and there's a number thing again three days he was there three days and that number three is so important and in the old testament and the new testament all the time and so in three days he was there and then asked jackson my grandson says when we read the story he spit him out into the sand and then that's when jonah knew he needed to get to nivea he needed to listen to the lord so what about us are there times where we just don't really understand why the Lord wants us to do something or why we have to do it all the time? That's what I hear, especially now with my grandsons. They like to use the words everyone, all the time, never. But those aren't words we can use because that would mean that our lives were like a robot of some kind and we're always doing the same thing day in and day out. And our life is not that way. And God doesn't want our life to be that way either. But he's in this fish and he's thrown or spit out, comes out through the blowhole of the whale, whichever you want to call it. But he's on the sand and he decides that maybe it's time to go to Nivea and maybe he should listen to God and go to Nivea. Now, of course, he goes to Nivea and he tries to warn the people everything that's going on. And he tells them, you have 40 days. If not, God is going to destroy you. And they laugh at him. Who's your God and everything else? Don't people do that now? If you talk about God in your schools or with your other friends or why you pray, there might be some people that laugh at you and don't believe. But guess what? If you stand firm in your faith with the Lord, when those people reach a situation, just like this captain did on the boat, Everybody on the crew had their gods or their beliefs or their ways that they could do things. But when it got down to we need to be saved, who did they go to? But our God, because they understood his power. And when your friends need somebody to talk to or need somebody to help them because their mom or dad are sick or grandma or their dog or their cat, they're going to remember you. So you always need to remember don't be scared to talk about God. Don't be scared to say, I will pray for you. I know it's hard in schools because they don't like you to do that. But you can say simple things like, I will pray for you. Or I ask my mom and dad to pray for you. I'll ask my teacher. I ask my pastor. Whatever you want to do. Those are okay to do that. And so he goes to Nibia. And things don't go the way that Jonah likes it. But unfortunately, that's the way life sometimes goes. It doesn't go the way we like it. So next week, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Jonah and how we have choices to make. And Jonah had some choices already, but there's still more choices that he needs to make. And as I say, like before, he has a little bit of a pity party. And me, oh me, oh me. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so I want you to think about something that maybe your parents told you to do, or maybe your teacher told you to do. I mean, you're being homeschooled right now, and it's so easy to get distracted and not to do the work. I know. I'm trying to help my grandkids right now, and sometimes I just look at them like, really? Keep focused. Get it done. But I know it's hard sometimes to stay focused when you're sitting at your kitchen table or sitting on your bed reading a story for one of your classes. But I know you can do this. So I just want to know what things do you do to keep yourself focused during this time? Not focused on your schoolwork and stuff, but focus on God. Are you spending time with him? Are you looking for a devotion? Miss Teresa is sending out all kinds of ideas and things for you to do. And we're going to be sending out another one that says, what is church to you? Okay. Church is not just a building. And that's something that we're all learning right now. Even people that have been going to church forever. It's not the building. We are all the church. And God can use all of us on that. So figure out what is church to you and think about that. And then think about 
maybe something that you didn't think you had to do or you disobeyed and maybe what happened, whatever you feel free to share. I'm on Kids Messenger, so you can try to do that um, and talk to your mom and dad to get you set up on that. Um, you can have your mom and dad's Facebook me. I'm, I'm sort of good on that, sort of not. So sometimes I hang up on you before I answer, so have patience with me. And I'm learning these new things one way or the other. And so in closing, I want to tell you when we get to come back, and I have no idea because it's in God's plan, not my plan. But when we come back and we got everybody coming back to church after a couple of weeks, because some people are still going to be nervous about coming to church, but we're going to plan a party, a time of celebrating how God was with us. So just need to think about it and give me some ideas. Would you like to go to the skating rink and uh, have a skating party? Would you like to go to Chuck E. Cheese? Would you like to have an ice cream party? And we'll just put all kinds of ice cream and toppings and do that and maybe do some time of worship with the Lord and eat a bunch of ice cream. Do you want to go on a huge scavenger hunt around the church parking lot? I need ideas. Okay, so I want you to think of some ideas and then you can have mom Facebook me or you can add them on right now while you're listening to this. Whatever is the easiest for you to do. But I need ideas for fun things for us to do. Also, starting next week, I'm going to try to do a Zoom party, which means I will be able to check in with all you guys and you can see each other too. So all of your faces will be on the Zoom meeting. We need mom and dad's permission and we're working on that. And I'll be sending that out hopefully this week to mom and dad to give them a heads up. And we're going to do it on Friday nights. It's only for a little while. We can only do it for like about 30 minutes or so. But it gives a chance for you guys to see each other's faces, to do prayer requests, and we can pray for each other at the same time. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's all for today. We'll finish the Jonah story because there are still some choices that Jonah has to make. And he did have that pity party. So we're going to look at that again next week. Okay, so let me pray for all of you guys. Close your eyes. Put your hands together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for you being with us during this time. Help us in our adjust adjustment to our new normal, Lord. Just help us be safe, protection around us, protect our grandparents and our family and our friends, Lord. We ask for a special prayer for Roger as he's in the hospital. And we also ask for a special prayer for Tara and Brandon Hill's parents as uh, Brandon's dad is getting ready to go in for surgery. So we just ask that you be with him too and protect him. And just thank you, Lord, because we know that these children's prayers you hear. We know and can tell you of times where we celebrated in your healing power, Lord. We thank you for being with us today. We look forward to Pastor Robert's sermon later on today. And I just thank you, Lord, for all the love and peace that you can give us. And all God's children said, amen. Bye. See you later. Love you all.